Honourable and respected brothers and elders, there's no one here that would actually like to be called by bad names or incorrect things that are attributed to them. Any, no one wants to be able to be called something that they don't like. And part and parcel of the Islamic faith is that we always treat others how we want to be treated ourselves. If you don't want to be treated a certain way, don't treat other individuals that particular way. If you don't want to be, if you want to be treated a certain way, treat others that way so then good comes back to you as well what we find is is that talking on this subject of affecting people hurting people uh, the good mu'ashara which we have and need to develop as part of being muslims one of the things which we find very common is how the manner we speak to people relate to people and at times allah forgive forgive even ridicule people this is something which as muslims we need to check and we need to make sure that we remove from our particular and out from our lives we need to develop consciousness in such a way, we need to develop consciousness, ihsas, and consciousness that we don't want to offend anybody in any way, shape or form, and we should like for others what we like for ourselves. We should be specific how we talk. And this is something a good mu'ashara is built upon, a good society is built upon conscious individuals. I don't want to hurt someone, I don't want to affect somebody. If everybody thinks along this way, a good wholesome society is developed. But if everybody thinks for themselves, it's all about me, I don't care what other people feel or think, that's when society becomes very, very difficult to live in. An Islamic mu'ashara, an Islamic system is based upon showing each other good akhlaq and good nature, good conduct, good character. This is the qaza of deen. I want to share with you a particular verse of Quran in Surah Al-Hujurat, verse number 11. Allah Tabarak wa Ta'ala, he mentions, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la yaskhar qawmun min qawmin asa in yakunu khayran minhum, wa la nisa'un min nisa'in asa in yakunna khayran minhum, wa la talmizu anfusakum, wa la tanabazu bil alqab. There are three particular things which Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala revealed to you and I so we can practice to make a better mu'ashara and a better society. Number one, first and foremost, Ya ayyuhal ladhina amanu la yaskhar qawmun min qawm. Let it, oh, oh believers, people, let it not be that people ridicule other people. People shouldn't ridicule other people. Asa an yakunu khayran minhum. It's possible that the people you're ridiculing are better than you. It's possible that if you're ridiculing people, they're actually better than you. Well, and they mentioned وَلَا, تل... ولا نِسَاءٌ مِّن نِسَاءٍ عَسَاءٍ يَكُنَّ خَيْرًا مِّنْهُنَ And specifically Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He mentioned women as well. And there's a reason for this in particular. But I want to spoke if you sp just focus on this for a second. لا يسخر. It, basically it refers to here insulting one another, defaming one another, talking down to each other about certain particular traits and characteristics. Imam Qurtubi rahmatullahi who's a scholar of tafsir, he mentions that it doesn't, it's not only limited just to the tongue. When we insult people, it's not just limited to the tongue. Yes, I can say, you're like this. That's an insult from the tongue. But you can also do it by gesture as well. Show in, in a certain way, by hand. For example, if someone, for, let's just give you an example. Someone has a disability, they can't walk properly. You don't say nothing to them, but you're walking in a funny way to ridicule them. That's also, also forbidden from this verse as well. لا يسخر قوم من قوم That you're looking at someone's negative trait and you're making fun of that. That is impermissible, whether it's by the tongue, <coughs> whether it's by the hand, whether it's by gesture, whether it's by acting. Yani, if we see something negative in somebody, to highlight that in any way is impermissible in Islam. But it's done with the intention of insulting, ridiculing, defaming. To make people feel bad about themselves. This is absolutely impermissible in Islam. And I'll also add this as well, which is common amongst our society, especially amongst us all that are born here. And you guys may have faced this, right? So don't be defensive. I've experienced this in my family, that whenever someone tries to speak a bit of English, we ridicule their English. And I say we, meaning us who are born here. So we say, are oh, they freshy English? We take the mick out of how they speak. Like for example, one person, they, they, they saw one particular place and they pronounced it a wrong way. They pronounced a shop in a wrong way. After that, 
Unki chair ban gayi thi. So people were winding them up. So whenever they see with the, saw the shop, they would say, oh, Woolworth, Woolworth. And they'd make the person feel ridiculed. Pawn shop. They say it's not pawn, it's pound shop, brother. Pound shop. But the way you're talking is disrespectful. That's also la yaskhar qawm min qawm. And then what happens is, subhanallah, we see people, this has become a trend on YouTube, right? People make videos ridiculing people. And even Muslims fall into this. And now, alhamdulillah, we've got less YouTubers that do this, but yet we'll like the video, subscribe, ha ha ha, make a meme. But <laughs> this isn't the quality of a Muslim. And I, I, I say this because we have family who are from abroad. When someone comes, when they, if you ridicule them for their English, they become defensive. Now, now they don't want to speak English in front of anybody. Why? Because if I say the wrong thing, they're going to ridicule me and take the mick out of me. So they stay dumb, meaning that dumb is in the sense of not speaking. They pretend that they can't speak. They, they, they show themselves as not able to converse because they, if they say the wrong thing, you're going to get ridiculed. Does everyone understand where I'm coming from? Okay, so there's a certain way of pronouncing a certain thing. And unfortunately, because of us, we're born here, right? We can speak English better than the brothers who come from abroad, but that doesn't give us the right to ridicule people. And that's what the verse is saying. Asa yakunu khayran minhum. Don't think just because they can't speak English as good as you that you got to ridicule them. Maybe they may be better than you. What, you think you're just, you got that fazilat because you can speak English? How do you know? Well, just because you can speak a bit of English, just because you got a red passport, just because you got a business, just because you got a bit of money. They only came here now, you came here 20 years ago. Then what does that make you better, does it? No, only Allah knows who's good and who's not. So I, I, I feel this because I, you know, I, had a, I have relatives and they've gone through this and we hear about this as well. So it's our duty to highlight this. And I, make, and I hope and pray that someone listens to this and then they will pluck up the courage to go to those people and offer an apology and say, I'm sorry, if I ever made you feel like that, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. And I'll just offer an apology. An apology will go a long way, inshallah. But nevertheless, what is interesting in this particular verse, Allah Ta'ala mentions, لا يسخر قوم من قوم عسى يكونوا خير منهم ولا نساء من نساء. Allah specifically mentions women in addition to mentioning men. Any guess why? Women are worse for this, that's why. They take the mick even more. Women, are, they ridicule other women. And um, women are kind of, they hit really low blows. What they do is, is that you'll find that if a woman presents something on Instagram or Snapchat or Facebook or something of the like, which Allah forgive, which we shouldn't happen in the first place, but if, if people are doing it, the hate comments come from other women. And they try to ridicule them for something to bring down their fame, to make sure they don't get the attention, they don't get the spotlight. There's a whole reason and a re and for this is because... They, they actually are craving attention for themselves. And when they don't give that attention and someone else gets it, they feel they also want a slice of the pie. They feel jealous. So women are more jealous in their nature in comparison to men. However, it doesn't mean we don't do it. Hum, we also do it as well. But women, unfortunately, Allah mentioned them separately because this guna exists as also amongst them uh, in another level, even sometimes even more. So Allah spoke about them specifically. Address them separately, okay? women as well, men and women. Quran was sufficient just to say qawmun min qawm, just people shouldn't ridicule people. But with emphasis, Allah mentioned women just to point out that women also shouldn't do this as well. Listen, another thing, right, guys? I wanted to. The, moving on, don't, if you translate this, it mentions don't insult yourselves. Basically, it means don't insult others. But if you look at the Arabic translation, it says, Dalmizu anfusakum. Basically, translate it means don't insult yourselves. Now, why would the Quran use this such uslub? Why would it address it in this way? Because when you curse someone, you're cursing them, you're not cursing yourself. Well, actual fact, this is what happens. Because if you curse somebody and someone doesn't like what they've just, you've just said, what are they going to do in response? Curse back. And then that means by you cursing them, they're going to curse back at you. So similarly as well, as the Qur'an, the Uslu mentions, وَلَا تَقْتُلُوا أَنفُسَكُمْ Don't kill yourselves. It means don't kill others. But the Uslu is don't kill yourselves. Meaning, if this whole thing of bloodshed happens where you kill someone, someone's going to retaliate to you. So you're going to take revenge, someone's going to come back. And it's going to be this come back and fro, back and fro. Similarly, when you curse, you curse, they're going to curse. You're going to curse, they're going to curse back. And there's going to be this constant to and fro, and that's why it mentions don't curse yourselves. So number one, that's one thing. Secondly as well, is we should think 
you are no different from me. If I'm cursing you, it's as if I'm cursing myself because I'm air care. We're one. We're not separate. You are my brother, irrespective of your culture, whether you're from whichever country, but you are part of me. We're part of each other because we're Muslims. That's why it mentions, Ya ayyuha ladina amanu. Allah is saying, as the mindset of Muslims should be, this fellow Muslim brother is a part of me. So by me cursing him, I'm cursing myself. In Urdu, if you want to understand it from this way. There's a really, really beautiful, subhanAllah, and I like a sha'ar, so I want to share one with you, right? But Shah Zafar, Shah Zafar, rahmatullah, he mentioned this. Urdu wale thode khush honge. He mentions, Na thi hal ke jab hame apani khabar. Thik? What did he say? Na thi hal ke jab hame apani khabar. Rehe dekhte logo ke ayb ho honar. Padi apni barayon par jo nazar, to jahaan mein koi bura na raha. Oye, oye. If you understand Urdu, Ashar. That's quite deep. It means that we, there was a time I would look at everyone's faults. In which air, in which air, this person's got this, he's got this, she's got this. Take it. But then a time come, I started looking at myself and I thought, subhanAllah, there's no one worse than me. I'm the worst person. So what gives me the right to talk negatively about others? So that's what Zafar Rahmatullah, that's what he was referring to. It was a nice share, a poem. And the crux of it is this. Don't look for the faults of others because who has faults? We do as well. So when you're looking at the faults of others, and there are some, uh, let me just explain something. Why is it I see the faults in you? Why? Because mujhe apni pe nazar hai. Achha, I see the achai in myself. This brother, for example, a brother, he procrastinates, he delays everything. I don't do that. So what I see, he does that wrong because I don't have that. So for me, it looks bad because I don't have that thing inside me. For example, if someone does something wrong, I do the same thing. I would say, no, no, it's just a small issue. It's a small issue. We, 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 we brush it over. But if I don't do something and he does something, I'm going to say that's really bad. It's really bad because I don't do that. But do you understand where I'm coming from? The we look at others in their negativity in those things which we don't have because if I had that negativity I wouldn't say that's so bad I would say oh he needs to work on this inshallah he needs to work we're more sympathetic because that thing's in me but if it's not in me I run it into the ground because it doesn't affect me in any way shape or form so this is why the Quran mentions second thing don't insult one another and last but not least I'll mention this inshallah before we finish don't give each other bad nicknames don't give each other bad nicknames you know, Ikrima ibn Abi Jahal, rahimah, radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, sahabi, he's the son of Abu Jahal. But you heard of Abu Jahal? Tiga. When he went to Medina al Manawara, people referred to him as, they would say, oh, this person, he's the son of the Fir'aun of this Ummah. Fir'aun al This is Fir'aun, the Fir'aun of this Ummah, his son. So he would get offended by that. that you know, you, you're addressing me in a way that what my father done, that's his business. It doesn't, doesn't involve me. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed verse in relation to this. There's actually a number of asbab and reasons why this verse was revealed. There's another one in particular as well where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he referred to a sahabi by a particular name, not realizing that was a name which he was referred to as which he didn't like. But it was common in those days, someone would have a nickname or two, a few names. And this is why we should be very careful. When we give names to people, it shouldn't be based on ridiculing them. Generally what happens is we look for a fault, Someone does a certain thing and we ridicule them for that particular trait. For example, there was one person, he, uh, his eye was a bit closed, so they would call him Squinty. A squinty, that's not a nice name to call someone. Someone couldn't walk properly, so they call him Araj, cripple. There was one guy, you know, his ear was a bit pointy. They called him Star Trek. <laughs> if you guys watch Star Trek, anyone? Uh, Chalo, I have to give you some, maybe, I don't know, I can't give you any other examples from Bollywood because man, man, man's free from Bollywood, you get me? But anyway, but nevertheless, but start, it is a, there's a film, right, program, Mr. Spock, exactly, what, what he's gone is a bit pointy, isn't it? So this guy, he, his ear was a bit pointy, they called him Star Trek. Inna lillah, they read it. Yeah, he was born like that, man, you're calling man Star Trek. But nevertheless, this is why the Prophet ﷺ, you know, obviously he, he was unaware. He didn't know that that Sahabi was addressed by that name in a negative way. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down this verse and there are other asbab to it as well. 
Ibn Abbas عنه, he mentions something really profound. He mentions that, you know, when somebody makes tawba from a certain thing, don't ever address that person by what they've made tawba from. For example, someone used to be an alcoholic. So we say, Ujra sharabi kababi, that sharabi, that alcoholic. Someone, for example, has a child out of wedlock and we refer to them na'udzubillah as a harami. Someone, for example, now gambles, we say that, 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 that person who's a gambler, that he's a druggie, that crackhead, that brownhead. That may be something they did a long time ago. They've now made Islam of that. And now we want to remind them of the previous thing which they did. Guys, do you understand where I'm coming from? And it's quite common, isn't it? We say, gee, like there was one bichara, Allahu Akbar. Uh, one person referred to as another person as a Hinduani. Or that Hinduani came, but she became Muslim 10 years ago. She's still Hindu after 10 years. Do you see where I'm coming from? Or... Uh, where is that particular brother and they mention a negative trait that is absolutely impermissible within the deen and it's important to highlight this because unfortunately we do do it man I mean it's quite common Ibn Abbas radiallahu anhu he said one thing he said that I fear subhanallah he said that I, I fear even caught ridiculing a dog Ibn Abbas said I fear ridiculing even a dog even though it's a makhluk it's not even insan I fear if I ridicule a dog for being a dog let it not be Allah changes me into a dog <laughs> Sahabi Rasul saying this to hum kisi ka mazak uda we take the mick out of someone calling them nicknames saying something about them calling look look here I've in my madrasa I've got two students one two one Bilal one Bilal two Bilals now if I say I'm both with same surname, what do we do? So I call one Bilu and one Boti. Now that's not a ridicule name, you give me Bilu and the other one Boti. Because he said to me that, oh my father called me this name. So I said, Tige, etera naam pae bas. You're now from now on Boti. After that, everyone in the whole madrasa calls him Boti. In Urdu, Boti means a little piece of meat, okay? And Bilu is just, it's just a mashup Asian name we give kids for some reason. But anyway, what happened was that these names have stuck, but they're not ridicule. I'm not ridiculing them for something they did wrong. If, for example, one was, you know, someone had a physical defect, and I call, I called them by that physical defect, that's haram. And it's such a name which doesn't mean any ridicule. I'm not taking the mick out of them. I'm not being offensive. And they like the name as well. And people have started calling one Boti and one Bilu, and they like the name. It's not like they're saying, don't call me that. I don't like that. Stop calling me that. Refer to me as Bilal. I had, one, I had two Ismails, one big, one small. So one was Ismail Lambu, one was Ismail Chotu. Because they were both, one was tall, one was short. But that I'm not ridiculing them, it's just a way for Pehchan. Similarly, there's a whole bahas on this, and I, we haven't got time to go into it. But when we, uh, what is permissible is when we talk about someone without the intention of disgracing that individual. If we can do this without talking negatively about them, their negative traits, then it's okay to give a name out of muhabba to someone. What did Rasulullah refer to as Abu Bakr as? As Siddiq. Umar radiallahu anhu as Al Faruq. Uthman as Dhul Nurain. Ali radiallahu anhu, also the name is given as Haydar. Hassan and Hussein, Sibtain. Khalid radiallahu anhu, Saifullah. Hamza radiallahu anhu, uh, Asadullah. So you see these names, subhanAllah, they're, they're good names. So there's not nothing wrong with giving someone. Abu Huraira. Huraira is not even. Abu Huraira means the, the, the father of the cat, small cat. It doesn't even have any. He, 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 I wasn't his given name. But nevertheless, like I said, to give a name based on piyar, muhabbat, that's okay. What's wrong is when we ridicule someone on a trait that they've got, a negative, or something that they've done in the past. That's where we need to just kind of check this. So just the verse again. Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu la yashar qawmu min qawm. Don't ever ridicule anyone. Asa yakunu khayra minhum. Because it's possible that they're better than you. And women shouldn't do it because it's possible that the people you're ridiculing are better than you. Wala talmizu anfusakum. Don't insult one another. Wala tanabazu bil alqab. Don't give each other... Uh, bad nicknames This I'll finish on Because this is a whole different thing within itself In short Bad is the name of sin after Iman Bad is the name of sin after Iman If someone's made Tawba from alcohol 10 years ago and we refer to them still as Sharabi That's wrong If someone for example did Tawba from something 10 years ago And we refer to them as X, Y or Z That's Haram One thing Second thing is Bad is the name of sin after Iman 
for you, let it not be that anyone can attribute any sin to you. We should try our best so no one can point a sin at us. If we're doing something, stop it. Because we shouldn't be called something X, Y, and Z, Sharabi, Haris, and Aflana, after accepting Iman. It's a dag and stain on our Iman. So, what is an ishara in this particular verse is try to keep yourself pure. Abstain from sin. Do the right thing. And if you do something wrong time to time, just make Dawbah time to time. Allah give us the inshallah. 